The reflection on karma appears in two of our regular chants. In one, in the context of the four Brahma Viharas, or the sublime attitudes, it's meant to induce equanimity. You think about the fact that people have their karma, you have your karma. And sometimes as a result of past karma, there's things that can't be changed, at least not for the time being. So it teaches equanimity, it teaches patience. Because as the Buddha pointed out, that principle that whatever we do for good or for evil, to that we fall heir, implies rebirth as well as karma. It's our working hypothesis. As he pointed out, there are many cases in the world where people break the precepts, but they get rewarded. So you have to say that actions are always rewarded in kind in this lifetime. It's obviously not true. And so he invites you to think about the long term, and we're talking about really long here. In his own case, in his awakening, he thought back many, many lifetimes, thousands and thousands of aeons. Thousands and thousands of universes, actually, forming and then falling away. Back so far that he said that the beginning point is not only unknowable, but it's also inconceivable. In the course of that long, long time, you've probably done a lot of things. You've been lots of different beings and lots of different situations. As he said, it would be hard to find someone now who hadn't at one point in that long time been your mother or your father or your sister or your brother or your son or your daughter. And some of that past karma has ripened and fallen to the wayside, and others, other past actions are still giving their results. And sometimes you simply have to live with them. Things about yourself you can't change, things about the situation around you you can't change, things about the situation around the people you love or the people you hate that you can't change. And when you take the long, long view like this, it makes a lot of your problems in the present lifetime seem pretty small. It helps you give you some equanimity, gives you some patience. Because there are a lot of things in life that you thought this was your one lifetime, this is your one chance. What strike you is very unfair. It would be hard to live with the idea to say that someone smeared your name and you couldn't get it unsmeared. Other people who don't seem to have any right to power have taken over a lot of power. But if you take the long view of things, you realize, okay, this is going to pass, and this is not your only chance. You look at the world, and it's interesting that you could make a case that the Buddha's reflections on karma are very un-American if we define American as being in line with the Declaration of Independence. There's no creator, there are no rights, there's no equality. Some people are born good-looking, other people are born ugly. Some people are born with a healthy body, some people with an unhealthy body. Some people are long-lived, short-lived, powerful, weak, wealthy, poor. So we come into the world not equal. But as the Buddha said, the important thing is not how you come into the world, but how you go out. And that's where the other reflection on karma comes in. We talk about how we're subject to aging, illness, and death, separation. But then we are the owners of our actions. In that case, karma is basically a reflection on confidence. Or you could say it's a reflection on hope. We can get past the suffering from aging, illness, and death, and separation if we train our minds well. Because the actions of the mind, say, as we meditate, that's a kind of karma, too. And this is where our hope lies, is that we have the opportunity not to be determined by our past actions. There is an element of freedom in your choice. This is the area where Buddhism is very American. One, it points to freedom, and two, it points to independence. Three, it points to 
the pursuit of happiness. It is something you can pursue through getting more and more skillful in your actions. And so where do your actions come from? They come from the mind. So skill in your words and deeds has to come from skill in the mind, which is what meditation is all about. We're developing the skills of mindfulness, alertness, and ardency, the skills of concentration and discernment. That would allow us not to be overcome by the results of past actions, and to see our way clear that regardless of what situation we find ourselves in, we can choose the skillful way out. As the Buddha said, some of us are born in darkness, some of us are born in light. Darkness means born in pure, <coughs> excuse me, poor circumstances. We have small chances for education, lots of difficulties in life. Some are born in light. In other words, things are, things are easy, things are comfortable when you come in. He says, that's not what's important. What's important is how you go, whether you go in darkness or go in light. And that's not determined how you, by how you came. Some people can come in darkness and go in light. In other words, they develop the precepts, they train their minds, and they're headed in a good direction. Other people are born in brightness and go in the dark way. In other words, they don't follow the precepts, they're not generous, they don't train their minds. So we have the choice. So the reflection on karma, the reflection on rebirth, is not just a cultural artifact from the Buddhist time. In fact, during his time, the whole idea of karma and rebirth, and whether there's any connection between the two, was hotly debated. Some people believed in, believed in rebirth, but other people didn't. Some of those who believed in rebirth did not believe that karma had anything to do with it. So the Buddha wasn't just picking up ideas from his environment. Based on his awakening, he took a stance. And as we know, he didn't take a stance on every issue of the time. So this, for him, was important. It's learning how to accept things that you cannot change when you take the long view. It helps to relieve a lot of suffering. And learning to look at your actions as, as important and having long-term consequences also relieves a lot of suffering. So give these teachings a chance. See how they can help you bear with things that otherwise would be unbearable. And see opportunities where otherwise you might not see them. Or you might get discouraged about trying to follow them through. Someone asked the other day, given the situation in the world right now, what are you supposed to do? Just kind of give up? And said no. And there is a possibility that things could collapse. But you work on developing good qualities of the mind in the meantime, even if you don't attain your particular goals in the world outside this time around. The fact that you've worked on the mind means that you're carrying something good with you as you go. So the teachings on karma and rebirth offer both patience and equanimity and hope and confidence. So try to take advantage of them. All too often we don't know how to use these teachings, which is why we feel uncomfortable around them. But if you learn how to use them, you find that they're really good tools. So try to use them with skill. <clears throat>